In the south of the Boperima region of the northwest province is the small town of Tahum. It is not far from Freiburg, the largest town of the region. Tahum is also accessible from Kimberley and Wolmeranstadt on the N12. Close to Taung, which means place of the lion, lies the Buxton Quarry, once the property of the Northern Lime Company. A road sign attracts attention to one of the most important discoveries in human history. This area is a World Heritage Site and it is dedicated to the discovery of a fossilized skull of a young child. The fossil was blasted out of an ancient cave during quarry operations during the 20s of the previous century. It wasn't an ape, nor a human. It was something in between. But the skull surely belonged to the hominid family, which includes humans and great apes such as gorillas. The fossil settled in Tufa Caves, the smallest of any of the hominid bearing caves in southern Africa. The soft, porous rocks were formed by calcium carbonate deposits from springs rich in lime. Taung became an enigma to be followed later by discoveries in much larger caves, such as Sterkfontein and Swartkrantz, not far from Johannesburg. These groundbreaking discoveries established Africa as the cradle of humankind. The man responsible for the scientific classification of the Taung skull was Professor Raymond Dart. It happened in 1924 when he was head of the anatomy department of the medical school of the University of the Witwatersrand. Yes, and of course uh, the digging of the face out of the stone took uh, many weeks. When it was uh, out, uh, it was a complete face, the like of which nobody had ever seen before. Uh, when they had any primate remains, they were purely those of, uh, say, a few teeth or a little bit of upper jaw or lower jaw. Nobody had ever found a skull that, that was so complete. Dart named it Australopithecus africanus. Australo means south. Pithecus is ape and Africanus is from Africa. Australopithecus Africanus, for that reason, means Southern Ape of Africa. Although not without controversy, the discovery of the Taung child skull was proclaimed as one of the most significant events of the time. It effectively advanced evidence of the existence of early man in Africa by more than a million years, leading many scientists to believe that early man was indeed initiated on the African continent. The original Taung fossils form part of the fossil collection of the University of the Witwatersrand, and it consists of three parts. The first is the mandible, or lower jawbone. And if this was all that was found at the time, it would have been sensational. It would have changed the way we see human evolution, in that this was evidence of the very first hominin ever to be found 
anywhere in the world in terms of an early hominin. The second part is the face. Dart recognized that this was not a baboon or any other primate. It was the face of a unique creature unlike anything ever found anywhere else. The third section is only a cast consisting of rock on the inside of the brain case or cranium. Scientists call it an endocranial cast. Almost like a miniature cave, it lay there for hundreds of thousands of years in which um, calcium carbonate uh, formed within the cranium of this child. You can see the crystals of ca calcium carbonate that have formed and looking on the other side you can see a large portion, almost all of it, of the brain that we can see the shape of the brain and the detail of vessels in the brain. If we put this together, and I'm going to do this very carefully because we need to be very careful with this. The, the endocast fits in like that. The lower jaw fits on like that. And there you can see the skull put together. Gives a good idea of the size and the shape of this creature. A theory proposed by Witz academics is that the Taung child was killed by a predatory bird, such as an eagle. You can see on the inside here, there are little holes where the talons of an eagle had actually pierced through the orbits, the eye sockets, into the brain. Uh, we feel that this creature was killed by an eagle and, and dropped uh, in Taung and thereby uh, fossilized. In 1924, Dart faced rejection by those who believed that modern humans first appeared in Asia. But his work was finally vindicated by subsequent discoveries, notably by Dr. Robert Broom, who uncovered Mrs. Pless in 1947 at Sterfontein in South Africa. He was Dart's only supporter in times when Dart was bitterly criticized. Other discoveries in Africa supported Dart and Broom on Australopithecus africanus, and it verified Africa as the birthplace of the human race. The Taung child was eventually recognized as the first fossil find of a human ancestral relative, dating from more than two million years ago. This was a turning point in our understanding of human evolution. Where does the Taung child fit in human evolution? Let's start at the beginning. Earth has been spinning for almost five billion years in our universe, that is about 14 billion years old. The earliest forms of life appeared about four billion years ago. At about 200,000 years ago, humans like us emerged. But what about ancestors before that time? Fossils and DNA research suggest that our family tree begins with an ape species that lived about 8 million years ago. It was the forebear of the African apes. A seven million year old fossil from Chad named Tumai is perhaps the closest and oldest we have come to finding an ancestor near to both humans and apes.
closer to our family tree was Australopithecus afarensis, which lived about four million years ago and which is best represented by the Ethiopian fossil Lucy. After Lucy, our family tree displays at least two branches. One branch forms the Paranthropus genus. The other begins with the Australopithecus africanus. Paranthropus means parallel to humans. These creatures evolved specialized teeth and jaws that could grind hard foods such as roots, berries and seeds. One million years ago, Paranthropus disappeared. Australopithecus africanus had human-like teeth and hands, but also had some ape-like features, including a small brain, flattened nose, and forward projecting jaws. Examples such as the Taung child and Mrs. Pless lived between two and three million years ago. The question that was asked was why did Raymond Dart think that this creature was different to anything else found before? He felt very strongly, Im almost immediately, that it wasn't a monkey or a baboon or even an ape. One can see in this young chimpanzee compared to this young child that uh, the tooth form is somewhat different. The molars have a different shape. This is a more human-like tooth, keeping in mind these are still baby teeth, deciduous teeth. One can also see that in an ape, such as a chimpanzee, you've got these rather sharp um, canine teeth, whereas the canine teeth in the Taung child are smaller and more human-like. Another very important feature, if you look at an ape, is that there's a gap between the canines and the incisors. You see the gap over there. That's known as diastema. In humans and in the hominids, you don't get the same level of diastema as what you do in the apes. Uh, the face of, is also flatter. Although this is a child, um, tends to have a flatter face also in apes and in hominids. But the face of a hominid is somewhat flatter. The shape of the nose is different. And one can clearly see when you compare it to this young ape that it is different in shape. Some say that the genus Homo evolved from something similar to the Taung and Pless specimens. Homo in Latin means human and it refers to any living or extinct member of the family Hominidae characterized by superior intelligence, articulate speech and upright walking. The genus Homo, to which we belong, is first recognized in the form of Homo habilis, a hominid with a notably larger brain than Australopithecus africanus. Homo habilis lived about two million years ago, and they were the first known to be able to make stone tools. After Homo habilis, followed Homo ergaster with its bigger brain, the same size as humans, and the ability to produce advanced tools and to control fire. Elsewhere in Asia and Europe, between 20,000 and 600,000 years ago, Species such as Homo heidelbergensis and Homo neanderthalensis evolved and became extinct. Modern humans belong to Homo sapiens. In Africa, they emerged about 200,000 years ago. They looked like us and were fully human. They could think and communicate symbolically, were self-aware, and created complex social and cultural ways of life. The discovery of the Taung child by Raymond Dart in 1924 
contributed enormously to the understanding of our evolutionary tree and had proved that Africa is the cradle of humankind. Many other fossils have also been found here, and ongoing research reinforces the enormous importance of this World Heritage Site. The value of the original skull and other fossils is priceless, and science would suffer a major blow if something happens to them. The fossils are being kept in a safe at Witts University, where it is accessible for further research. The Taung site is not only of archaeological importance, and while a visit to Dart's Pinnacle, the spot where the lime-encrusted skull was excavated is a must, there are many other attractions. From the limestone cliffs at the head of the valley, a constant flow of clear water runs through a succession of attractive pools on their way down to the ancient valley. The amazing blue pools are surrounded by caves and streams. They attract many hikers, adventurers and visitors who want to picnic there. But Taung's fame is above all linked to the discovery in 1924 of a juvenile skull that helped to improve the understanding of our past. It was a first of its kind and it placed Africa first in the evolution of humankind.